What's this? A letter for me. Welcome to another episode of Remember the Great Sports Through the Mail Thursdays. Today I'm going to share with you three recent returns that I just got back in the mail. The first one is postmarked from Illinois, and it is from former Baltimore Orioles outfielder, infielder Pete Stanisic on one, two, three, and four. So let me tell you about Pete Stanisic and his career in baseball. Pete Stanisic grew up in Illinois where he attended high school in Illinois. He was originally drafted by the Baltimore Orioles in the 13th round of the 84 draft. However, he chose not to sign with the Orioles and instead enrolled at Stanford University to play college baseball. Well, the Orioles convinced him to drop out of college the following year because the Orioles again drafted him in the ninth round of the 1985 draft uh, just a year later. After signing his professional contract, Pete was assigned to the Orioles' low A affiliate where he appeared in 69 games for the team, batting 251 and stealing 30 bases. The following year, in 1986, he was promoted to uh, high A for the Orioles, and in 127 games, he posted a 317 batting average and stole 77 bases for the Orioles affiliate that year. Well, in 1987, he was tested at double A, eventually getting promoted to triple A, appearing in 126 games, batting 309 and stealing 38 bases. That same year in 1987, he got his call up to the majors, so if you followed that, he started the year in double A, and by the end of the 87 season, he was in the major leagues. On September 1st, 1987, Pete made his major league debut. He would finish out the year with the with the Orioles posting a very solid 274 batting average, stealing eight bases and playing second base in the outfield, kind of as a utility type player. Another neat fact about Pete is that his brother Steve actually made his major league debut in the same season with the Milwaukee Brewers on September 16, 1987. So that definitely must have been a proud moment for uh, Steve and Pete's parents that season. He began the 1988 season with Rochester, the AAA affiliate, but was called up on April 29, 1988, after the Orioles began the season with their 21-game losing streak. He was called up to the Orioles to be a multi-purpose man, to play second base, third base, and the outfield, so the ultimate utility player. In 1988, he led the team in stolen bases with 12, but he batted just 230. Going into the 1989 season, um, Pete would actually be injured, and he would have an injury that unfortunately he, prob he did not bounce back from. He would uh, struggle a little bit just appearing in 47 games in AA for the Orioles AA affiliate in 1989. And then in 1990, he split time between AA and AAA for the Orioles affiliate, never reaching the major leagues again. So, in just 113 games at the major league level, after he turned 27 years old, I guess when he was 28, Pete decided to retire from baseball as a major league baseball player. Uh, Post-playing career, I don't know much about uh, what, ha what happened to Pete after he decided to hang up the baseball cleats, but uh, for his career in the major leagues, he had a lifetime 243 batting average, appeared in 113 games, and stole 20 bases over the short period of time that he, he got to play in the majors. So this is another one of those guys that if he wouldn't have got injured, he very well might have been a long-term piece of the Baltimore Orioles you know, moving forward, but uh, unfortunately that injury just uh, set him back. So very happy to add Pete to the collection, adding another all-time Orioles card to the collection. All right, so this next one comes back from former Detroit Tiger fan favorite, Jim Whalewander on one, two, Three is a major leaguer, a fourth is a major leaguer on his card there. So two minor league cards and two major league cards. And in addition to this, Jim included a custom drawing, you know, I guess a facsimile 
of the 1989 tops. There's nothing on the back, but this was a you know added bonus that he stuck in the envelope with it. So I'm just going to put those two side by side while I talk about them because you can see that somebody was quite proud of that 89 tops and actually did an artist drawing of it. So let me tell you about Jim Whalewander and his career in baseball. Jim Whalewander, nicknamed Wales, attended high school in the Chicago area in Illinois, and he then went to Iowa State University where the Detroit Tigers made him their ninth round pick in the 1983 amateur draft. After signing with the Tigers professionally, the 21-year-old found himself appearing in 73 games for the Tigers rookie ball affiliate where he posted a 319 batting average in that small stint. The following year in 84, he was promoted up to single A where he posted a 271 batting average. The following year in 85, he would start in single A, be promoted to double A in 143 games. In 86, he would start the season in double A and spend the entire year with 124 games. And after starting the season in the minor leagues in 1987, on May 31st, 1987, the Detroit Tigers would call Jim Whalewander up to the major leagues where he would make his major league debut. Whalewander would finish the year in the major leagues, uh, primarily being used as a backup uh, infielder playing second base, third base, and being a pinch runner. In the 53 games, he would post a 241 batting average. The following year, in 1988, he would be also used in a utility role where he would play the majority of the season, appearing in 88 games, splitting time in Detroit, playing as a utility man. Well, in 1989, there just wasn't a spot for Jim on the Major League roster, and he was again signed to AAA. Wales became such a fan favorite in his time in Detroit, he actually started his own fan club, and somebody locally even wrote a uh, song in his honor, and a Tigers fan named Eastside Billy wrote a song called the Jim Whale Wander Blues and recorded it with his band, the Ten Speeds. Despite his fanfare, Whale Wander did not make the Major League Club in 1989 and spent the entire 1989 season in AAA playing for the Detroit Tigers. After the 1989 season concluded, the Detroit Tigers did not have Whale Wander in their long-term plans, primarily, you know, being an infielder in Detroit in the 1980s. He was subject to being playing behind Lou Whitaker and Hall of Famer Alan Trammell. So the Detroit Tigers chose to elect him to go to free agency. Whale Wander would sign with the New York Yankees. And Whale Wander would get a brief chance with the Yankees, uh, although he would spend the entire 1990 season, with the exception of nine games in AAA for the Yankees. In his nine games in 1990 in the major leagues in Yankee Stadium, he just got one hit in nine games in the appearance that he had there. Well, in 1991, the Yankees chose to send him back down to AAA and he did not get called back to, up to the majors, appearing in 126 games, posting a 225 batting average for the Yankees' AAA affiliate. After his, his season completed with the 1991 Yankees' AAA affiliate, Wellwander actually went overseas and played in 1992 in Milan, Italy. Unfortunately, he didn't play the entire season in Italy as he incurred an injury and had to return to the U.S., Upon returning to the United States from Italy, he was picked up by the Texas Rangers AAA affiliate and assigned to Oklahoma City. He finished off the year in 1992 with the Rangers AAA affiliate, not getting a call to the majors. In 1993, he signed with the California Angels and played in their AAA affiliate in Vancouver, Canada. During the season, he was called up to the Angels a couple times, once in July and also in September. After the 1993 season ended, he signed in 1994 with the Florida Marlins, and, and, and in 1994, obviously the strike-shortened season ended his playing career, and at 32 years old, uh, he hung up the cleats and went back to college 
and actually received his degree from Arizona State University and then later his MBA from UCLA. So I'm not really sure what Jim's doing post playing career, but obviously he went back and got his education for a reason. I'm very happy to add his autograph to the collection because I, I remember getting these cards back in the day. You know, he was kind of a big deal. I kind of remember him being a, you know, a, a rookie prospect. But, um, you know, never gotten his autograph before. So very happy to add him to the collection. Also very cool him to add that little art card um, to send to his fans as well. All right, so this final one is postmarked from Atlanta. And this is a well-known player to the autograph collectors out there. And this is former Montreal Expo Zane Smith slash Pittsburgh Pirate slash Atlanta Brave. He's not a Brave there. These are three Expos cards and one Pirates card. So let me tell you about Zane Smith and his career in baseball. Zane Smith played his high school baseball in Nebraska, then later played his college baseball at Indiana State University. He was selected in the 1982 draft in the third round by the Atlanta Braves. His first year in 1982, the 21-year-old found himself in the Braves' single-A affiliate where he appeared in 12 games, posting a 5-3 record. The following year in 1983, he was in single-A again, and his record was just 9 wins and 15 losses in 27 games. Well, in 1984, things seemed to just click together for him. And with his promotion to double A, he posted a great record in double A, garnering a promotion to triple A, where his overall numbers in 28 starts were 14 wins and 4 losses in those 28 games. His progression kept going upward in 1984, and on September 10th, 1984, he was promoted to the major leagues and made his major league debut with the Atlanta Braves. He would start three games to finish out the year in 1984 for the Braves. In 1985, he would find himself on the Braves pitching staff, where he would appear in 18 games as a starter, overall appearing in 42 games, you know, the rest of the time in the bullpen. In 1986, he would solidify a starting role on the Braves pitching staff, starting 32 games for them that season. Well, in 1987, this was by far his best season to date, where he started a league-leading 36 games that year for the Braves, posting a 15-win and 10-loss record. The following year, in 1988, his record slipped to just 5-10 and 10 in 23 games for the Braves. In 1989, he, he got off to a horrendous start with the Braves. In 17 games with the Braves, he posted one win and 12 losses that year for the Braves in 1989. Well, on July 2nd of 1989, after having just a miserable start to the season, he was traded to the Montreal Expos for a handful of minor leaguers. So after his trade to Montreal, the Expos just put him in the bullpen, and he responded in 31 games with a 1.50 ERA that season after the trade. Well, in 1990, the Expos decided to make him a starter again, and after posting a 6-7 and seven record, the Expos decided to trade him to the Pittsburgh Pirates on August 8, 1990. This would be the trade that would bring Moises Alou to the Montreal Expos, which obviously Alou would become a great outfield for the Expos for many years to come. Well, with his time in Pittsburgh, right off the bat, he posted a 6-2 and two record in 10 starts with a 1.30 ERA for the Pirates. Well, in 1991, the Pittsburgh Pirates put together one of their best teams in many years, and Zane had a career year, posting a 16-win and 10-loss record in 35 starts for the 1991 Pittsburgh Pirates. The following year, in 1992, his success was split at 500 with 8 wins and 8 losses. And in 1993, he was limited to just a 3-7 and seven record and 14 starts due to an injury with the Pirates. In 1994, he was back in the starting rotation with the Pirates. And as I've mentioned before, 
the strike shortened season, he started in 24 games and posted a 10 and 8 record with a 3.27 ERA, which was pretty respectable. Despite having these decent numbers, uh, the Pirates chose not to re-sign him after the strike concluded, and he signed as a free agent with the Boston Red Sox. Well, after signing with the Red Sox, his uh, one year in Boston in 1995, he had an 8-8 record and 21 starts, posting a 5-6-1 ERA. After the 95 season concluded, the Pirates decided to sign him again, and after 16 games, he posted a 4-6 and six record for the Pirates in 1996, and on July 6, 1996, the Pirates released Zane from his contract. After his playing career in the major leagues, Zane moved back to the Atlanta, Georgia area, where he still resides to this day. Not really sure if he's still involved with baseball or not, but very happy to add Mr. Smith to the collection. I also want to thank Mr. Wallwander again, or Whalewander again, for signing all these cards and including this awesome custom card. I also want to thank Pete Stanisic for signing as well, adding another all-time Oriole to the collection. I'm going to see if I have anything for his brother to sign. I'll have to check my cards to see what I have and see if he signs through the mail as well. I look forward to your comments below, and as always, happy collecting.